Hello, my name is Floris Vandenberg. I'm a philosopher and I'd like to introduce you to my theory of green liberalism. Green liberalism is a new way of looking at the liberal philosophy. So what I'm doing here today is to change liberalism into what is called green liberalism. And the essence of green liberalism is that it takes the core of liberalism, which is the no harm principle, everything is allowed as long as you do not harm others, and then extend that principle towards all animals or all beings that get, are able to suffer. And it looks like this. So classical liberalism applies to humans. And green liberalism is the extension of liberalism. So it's an extension to include all that can suffer. So, and that is called, so that means animals and future generations. So, basically, liberalism stays the same. Liberalism means everything is allowed as long as you do not harm others. This is the so-called no harm principle by John Stuart Mill. So John Stuart Mill's principle is called the no harm principle. No harm principle. And that means that you can do anything you want as an individual as long as you are not harming any others. Basically, this principle was understood to only apply to humans, to humans only. So you can do anything you want as long as you do not harm other human beings. But the philosophy in the 20th century, the essence of philosophy in the 20th century is about expanding the moral circle to ask to who does ethics apply. And one of the most important philosophers in this field is the philosopher Peter Singer, who argues that we should extend the moral, moral circle from only humans to include uh, non-human animals of future generations as well, based on the principle of suffering. And if you expand the moral circle from humans only to include uh, all uh, beings that can suffer, that is called sentientism. So, green liberalism is, um, but is sentientistic liberalism, but it doesn't, that's not a way that the word doesn't, uh, um, uh, is not very um, smooth, so that's why I use green liberalism. But green liberalism is um, anthropocentric liberalism expanded to uh, all uh, non human beings and future generations. But now, where does it lead? If we look at green liberalism, then one of the things which immediately comes to mind that liberalism includes things which are very controversial uh, as compared to classical liberalism. And one of the things that is, comes to mind as first, that is that green liberalism includes, not very surprising, Veganism. So that's why I can say uh, the, the saying, I'm a liberal, therefore I'm a vegan. That, which means that um, everything is allowed as, you, as long as you do not harm others. As you, when you're not a vegan, you are harming uh, uh, non-human animals. So that is not liberal at all. And that is um, what, what is, makes this uh, green liberalism so new and also um, controversial is that, that it is different from everything what we think that liberalism is. But green liberalism, ladies and gentlemen, is only the more consistent form of um, uh, liberalism. Second, the second thing about 
liberalism is, is that we should not harm future generations. And how do we harm future generations? We harm future generations by living a too large, uh, to having a too large ecological footprint. So we have to reduce our ecological footprint. And in the Netherlands, the average footprint of the, uh, of is 3.7 planets. So that means that if everyone would live on this planet as the average Dutch person lives, then we would need 3.7 planets. As you know, there's only one planet, and therefore we, in our liberal society, we are harming future generations. Actually, we are plundering future generations. And that is in contradiction to the no harm principle by John Stuart Mill. So if we would be truthful liberals, we should live and not harm future generations by reducing our footprint by to maximum one uh, planet so that we have to really reduce our ecological footprint. So that's ecological footprint. So the, the, the strange thing, that, that which is a paradox about green liberalism is that although we live in a liberal society and we have in our society expanded the moral circle to include all human beings. And in the Netherlands, for example, the, there was the, the country which was the first country in the world to have um, legalized same-sex marriage. So that's, you can say, a truly liberal society. Um, but if we look at it from the green liberal perspective, uh, which also includes uh, non-human animals and future generations, our society is not liberal at all. So that is, that is a, a conclusion that, that there is a big difference between how the world is and how it, in theory, should be. So that is the big question of our times. Uh, are we liberals? Are, do we want to stick to the uh, anthropocentric uh, liberalism and thereby discriminating against non-human animals in future generations? Or are we prepared to face the challenge and to move on towards green liberalism.